Shalom. Kolaimla Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Rikwakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work and truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. All nations shall serve the God of Jacob. And that's going to be done through the tabernacle of David, the new governing authority, the lawgivers. So what you're looking at here, this video, is a video of what I perceive to be an Ammonite, so-called Japanese eating unclean food. We're not supposed to eat shellfish. We're supposed to eat fish with scales and fins. So this will not be permitted in the kingdom to come. Here on earth, by the way, not floating away on a magic carpet or on a cloud somewhere. The kingdom of heaven is going to be here on earth. The Bible says in 2 Ezra chapter 6, verse 9, Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. So this type of nonsense is not going to be lawful. Let's go here. Oh, by the way, so whenever you have a sovereign nation, in order for those outsiders, foreigners, strangers to become citizens of your nation, they're going to have to be what? Naturalized. So all nations are going to be subject to the laws, statutes, and commandments of the God of Jacob. Let's go into that term, naturalize. <clears throat> Naturalized. Of a foreigner admitted to the citizenship of a country. Well, these nations are going to learn the ways of the God of Jacob and serve the king, Shai followed by the tabernacle of David, the new governing authority. Let's, I'm going to prove that further. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 2. The book of Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. These nations are going to learn the ways of the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Just like if you're an immigrant to a new country. Verse 3. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his statutes. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So the law, statutes, and commandments is going to govern in the kingdom to come. And eating a rod with a shell is not going to be allowed. Unbelievable.
hells to the nizzo, to the no, to the no. Okay? So we're going to follow our lawgiver. <coughs> Who is our lawgiver? Let's go to Isaiah 33, verse 22. The book of Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 22. For well, the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. So this king is the same savior spoken of in Isaiah chapter 19, verse 20. That we're going to cry out unto the Lord and he's going to send us a savior. That's Yahweh Shai. His name means he will deliver, deliver or savior. So that lawgiver rests in Judah. Let's go to Psalms 60 or 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 60, verse 7. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of my head. Judah is my lawgiver. So the law is going to come forth out of the tabernacle of David, which Shai is going to be the head of that throne and occupy the throne of his father. Gilead is mine, and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of my head. Judah is my lawgiver. And we know that Ephraim is the chief of the northern kingdom. That's why I believe that Cornelius was from the tribe of Ephraim. Because that came in the order after Judah is after Judah wakes up. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, Ephraim is the chief of the northern kingdom. Anyway, let's keep going. Let's go from there to the book of Psalms, chapter 116. The book of Psalms, chapter 116. Let's go to verse 13. <clears throat> I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. So his name does matter. And we're going to need to call on his name in the time of of Jacob's trouble, great tribulation that's going to come upon the earth. And Israel is going to be in the crosshairs, the elect of the house of Jacob. Let's jump up. In the time of trouble. Here it is, Psalms 116, verse one, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore, will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death come past me and the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. So we're going to go through the fiery trial of affliction, great tribulation. Hell are conditions on earth being brought low, a low estate. <clears throat> Matter of fact, 
let's prove that. Let's jump down to verse 6. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. So hell is affliction, servitude, and the fiery trial of adversity. And technically comes from the word Sha'al, which means the grave, being brought low. Let's jump back up. Psalms 116, verse 3. The sorrows of death come past me, and the pains of hell get hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then we're going to do what? Then call I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. So the elect are going to call upon his holy name. <clears throat> or to Zechariah 13, verse 8. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my power. Did not we read this? Where? Well, we read it right here. Isaiah 33, verse 22. For the Lord, for the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. So he is our rock, our solid foundation that we can stand upon. He will save us. Yahweh Shai, that's the son of the Most High. His very name means deliverer, savior. Let's keep going. What does that word simple come from? Let's go back. Psalms. 116, verse 6. A moment. Verse 6. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. What is that simple? Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 6612. Pethi. Pathy. Sounds close to pathetic. Simple ones, foolish. Simplicity, foolish. Who is he talking to? Let's go to Jeremiah 4, verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. So he's talking about his people. Why you think we're called sheep? Sheep are what? Simple, very passive, docile, and simple. Easily led astray, easily led to the slaughter. How do we know that? Psalms. 44, Psalms 44, verse 11, thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat and has scattered us among the heathen. So we are scattered into all nations. So we look like the other nations. And we're at the bottom. We are a living sacrifice for the Lord. 
sacrificial sheep under the blood of the lamb. Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. Oh, he's talking about the Israelites that were scattered into all nations. Let's keep going. So every nation is going to worship and reverence the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's go to Psalms 86. A book of Psalms, chapter 86, or 6. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. See? Oh, the elect is going to call upon his holy name. King David is prophesying through the spirit. King David is also a prophet. Let's read it again. Psalms 86 or 6. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplication. Supplication is beseeching the Most High, which means begging in prayer. Or 7. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou won't answer me. How can we call on him unless we know his name? So we're going to call on his name. Verse 8. Among the gods, there is none like unto thee, O Lord. Neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations, what? All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. So that includes Ammon. I'm going to say, they're going to worship him. See? All nations are. They're going to learn the ways of our power and come and worship before him under the Israelites. So there is an order to this. The order is Jacob first. The Israelites waking up which starts with Judah, and then it bleeds over into the tabernacle of David. 144,000, followed by the remnant of the hopeful elect, with King Yehoshai at the top of the pyramid, under the Most High. After the Most High, Yehoshai, our king, followed by King David, followed by the 144,000 new governors, followed by the remnant, men, women, and children. Let's read that again. Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter 86, verse 9. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art power alone. See? Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. For the prophets are teaching his name. to Romans 10, Romans 10 and 13. For well, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See? So that name carries a spiritual power. Verse 14. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him 
of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So the prophets are preachers and teachers. Messengers, which reverts back to the word angel. Zephaniah 14, verse 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. See? So starting with the nation of Israel, followed by the other nations, are going to come and serve one power, Yahweh, which is delegated down to his son, Yahweh Shai, followed by the sons of the Most High, the 144,000. So every knee is going to bow. Every tongue confess. Point blank, period. Let's read that again. Zechariah 14, verse 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. The Most High's name is Yahweh, which means he is or he exists. And his son's name is Yahweh Shai, our deliverer, our savior. Zephaniah 3, let's go to verse 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So the earth is going to be clean dissolved. Idols and witchcraft must be burned with fire. And this entire global empire was built on idols. Let's get the key point. The key point, Zephaniah 3, verse 9. For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. <coughs> See? So we're reading about the real legitimate New World Order under the tabernacle of David under Yahweh Shai. Let's close out here. This is the NWO. The old world got to go. Let's go to Philippians 2. A book of Philippians chapter 2. Let's go to verse 7. But made of no reputation and took upon him a form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Yahweh Shai came as a meek and humble lamb to the slaughter to become a blood sacrifice for the house of Israel. Verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, a perfect sacrifice. Verse 9, Wherefore, the Most High also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So the Most High cannot renege on his word. So he cannot fail on his word of promise. Verse 10, 
that at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue, verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai Hamashiach is Lord to the glory of the power of the Father. Oh, in reverencing or worshiping his name, you must follow his ways. And that's going to be mandatory to all nations. But Israel gets the salvation, the dominion, rulership, and governance. And the other nations are going to learn the ways of the God of Jacob. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. All praises to Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rekwakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Pan Yasharala. And abide the Bible. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatham. Shalom.